Dr. Manali Desai. I'm a quadruple board certified cardiologist. Today I'm going to be talking about the ECG function of the Apple Watch. This is a follow-up to my video about the same topic um, from back in 2018. So now, so far, the Apple Watch ECG has been primarily used to determine if the person wearing the watch has atrial fibrillation or not. Atrial fibrillation can increase your risk for forming blood clots, which can cause a stroke, among other things. Uh, it's important to remember that you know other things besides atrial fibrillation can increase your risk of forming blood clots and uh, increase your risk of having a stroke. Since the Apple Watch helps identify atrial fibrillation, you might wonder how common it is. It occurs in about 0.5% of the world, so it's not that common, but it's still the most common abnormal heart rhythm um, that occurs. In the United States, the CDC says it occurs in about up to 2% of people at any given time. Um, and it's important to remember that, you know, it's more likely, you're more likely to develop atrial fibrillation as you get older. Although it can occur in young people, it's more likely to occur as you age. It's kind of like an aging of the electrical system of your heart. And so it's more common in people who are 65 years or older, although it can occur in younger people too. So the next question is, what data is available um, for the Apple Watch ECG function? So since I made the last video in 2018, there is more data available, but there's still not a lot of data available. And the quality of data, some of it is good, some of it is bad. Some of it was taken um, when people are doing their everyday um, activities, during their regular lives. Other data was taken in the electrophysiology lab where abnormal heart rhythms were induced. So we're not comparing data um, apples to apples. It's more apples to oranges data, but because there's not a lot of data. I'm just going to talk about what there is. Um, it's only been a few years since the Apple Watch ECG function came out, so I'm sure in a few more years there'll be a lot more data and then you know we can compare more equal data, but right now I'm just going to talk about the data that there is. So the biggest question is, is if the Apple Watch ECG function tells you you may have atrial fibrillation, how likely is it to be accurate? How likely is it that you actually have atrial fibrillation? And so the data is mixed. Some studies show that it is accurate and some studies show that it's not. It's most likely to be accurate if you actually have a risk factor for atrial fibrillation. Some of the common risk factors are being over 65, having a history of high blood pressure, having a history of diabetes, having a history of other heart disease, and having a history of stroke. Those are the common ones. And so if you ha already have a risk factor for atrial fibrillation, then it's more likely to be accurate. Um, part of the reason why is like we talked about last time is that, you know, um, the Apple Watch ECG is a one lead ECG. Um, it only takes measurements from one area of your heart. Um, the electrical heart rhythm and the t what you get in the doctor's office is a 12 lead ECG and so then you're getting more data from the heart's electrical system. After my video in 2018, a few people had asked about, um, can you get a multi-lead ECG from the Apple Watch by moving it around? And you can, um, you know, so basically the sensor is on the back here and you could move it to different limbs and move it across your chest so that you could get a 12-lead ECG too. There are only a few case studies so far about how accurate this could be, but um, it's promising, but I really don't know because there hasn't been enough studies to say how accurate it's gonna be versus a 12-lead ECG, but it is possible you can do that. Um, you know, the main thing Thing is going to be is that the watch itself isn't going to know how to interpret that. Um, what you're getting is different vector physiology. EKGs are based on electromagnetic physics and so you're getting different vector physiology from where the heart's located to where the lead's located and the machine learning algorithm um, you know in the watch doesn't know how to read from different areas and put that information together and give you a diagnosis and so you'd probably still have to show it um, to a cardiologist. Now you know atrial fibrillation doesn't look wildly different from lead to lead, um, but um, you know, I just don't know if it's going to know how to interpret this data um, from different places, the same as a 12 lead ECG machine does, um, because it does have that algorithm to know how to interpret all 12 leads. Um, and so that's the main difference, but you could do it and see what it shows you. Um, the other thing to remember is that sometimes, um, you know, people go into atrial fibrillation for minutes and then they're back out of it. Um, sometimes they're in it for hours or days. So if you go into an abnormal heart rhythm, you'd have to get all 12 lead ECGs. Um, you know, you'd have to move it and position it um, across in within a few minutes um, or whenever you're actually feeling symptoms to know if that's, if it correlates or not. Um, you know, if you have symptoms for a few seconds and then you don't get all 12 leads, then they're interpreting data um, at a different time from when you had symptoms. And so that's important to remember as well. 
So my opinion is, is that, you know, a lot of the future capabilities of what the Apple Watch ECG function can do are probably more exciting than what it could do so far. Um, likely at some point, you know, in the future, it's gonna be able to interpret other types of abnormal heart rhythms and also see other types of EKG changes. For example, medications like azithromycin can affect your ECG and our EKG and that, you know, will likely show up as well um, at some point in the future. It can affect your electrical signal, which can show up on the ECG. And the same thing with if you have a heart attack or any type of blockages in your artery that's restricting blood flow, that can cause EKG changes. And, um, you know, there have been a few case studies where it's been picked up on the Apple Watch ECG, but the Apple Watch doesn't know how to read that. So again, um, you'd have to send it to a cardiologist unless you too know how to read EKGs, um, you know, to see what, if, any um, changes were there. And so maybe one day, you know, the algorithm itself will be able to pick up on these things and know what it means. Um, and so I think the future capabilities are more exciting than the current, than its current capabilities. And um, another thing to remember, you know, is if you have a pacemaker or ICD, this is a magnet technology in the back. And so it can interfere with the settings. Um, same with the iPhone 12. And so um, Apple recommends that you keep it at least six inches from your pacemaker or ICD device um, because you can interfere with the settings. So then the last question is, is should you get the Apple Watch? And for most people, probably not, unless you have a risk factor for atrial fibrillation. Um, now, the next thing to think about, though, is that 80% of cardiac disease is thought to be preventable. And part of that is eating healthy and not having bad habits like smoking. But the other part is cardiac or aerobic exercise. So if you think having an Apple Watch will keep you motivated to exercise, especially during the pandemic where it's harder to exercise, um, then, you know, that would be a reason um, to get it. You could also get another fitness tracker even the Apple watch without the ECG function is less expensive so if cost is an issue you know any fitness tracker will um, work anything that you feel like will help you stay motivated to exercise um, a lot of patients find closing the rings or competing their with their friends on Apple watch because a lot of people have it now um, you know is helpful for them to stay motivated so those are things to consider too um, but whatever you think will help you exercise it's an investment in your health and so that would be a reason just to get a fitness tracker in general um, but to get the Apple watch with the ECG function really is probably most beneficial for people who actually have a history um, of risk factors for atrial fibrillation and that again would be um, you know being over 65 years old a history of high blood pressure a history of diabetes a history of um, stroke or a history of having um, blood clots and a history of um, prior heart disease and so those are the most common ones that can lead to an increased risk of atrial fibrillation that's all for today. For more videos, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Manali Desai. I'll see you next time.